and welcome to the Georgia Southern Post Game Wrap Up Show. I'm Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. We're here at Paulson Stadium, where the Eagles finish the season off in style, I guess you'd say, winning 28 to 24 against the Troy Trojans, who had everything to play for, had the championship in the Sun Belt on the line. The Eagles, not much to play for except for pride and to send the seniors, the 20-some seniors out on top. And they did just that, played pretty well, especially there in the second half and were able to withstand a run by Troy and come back and win the game. Yeah, we've known now for a couple of weeks that Georgia Southern, not going to finish at 500 or better, won't be heading to a bowl. So as you mentioned, those 24 seniors honored today, uh, this would be the last game of their careers. So the next best thing to play for is to be a spoiler. That's exactly what they did today. This looked like a different team than what we've seen much of the year starting pretty early in the game. They were stopping Troy, a team that's really had its way on offense for much of the year. Then all of a sudden that Georgia Southern running game that's been absent for much of the year had some big plays, sprang to life. The passing game was there too. And by the final couple of quarters, you could tell that this is a team that fired up that definitely wanted to go out the right way. The big question would be, what took them so long to get this going in this direction? They ran the option a little bit there in the first half, ran it a little in second, and looked pretty good doing it. Uh, mixed in the pass pretty well, and then the defense makes a stand when they had to. I guess that's the big question, Mike, is what took so long? Well, it's really hard to say every week, uh, week in, week out, the different opponents you're playing for, uh, trying to decide where you can attack them, where you need to be wary of them. and. But funny enough, this Troy team, uh, even though Georgia Southern had its way with them last year, they were a defense that probably did as well against that great rushing attack as anybody. And all of a sudden today, Georgia Southern opens it up on them. Troy looked like they were a little bit surprised. There were holes that we haven't seen all season. Guys flailing at running backs in open space like we haven't seen all season. And Georgia Southern just making enough plays to win. And I guess they figured something out, and they were smart enough to run with it once uh, once it started clicking. Well, the bottom line is Georgia Southern's averaged right at what they averaged today, 26 points a game is what they've averaged all year. They've given up 26 points a game. It's just been, it seems like, most of the breaks and most of the close games have gone to the opposition. I know there were a couple of games like New Mexico State uh, and, and earlier in the year, there was another game that Georgia Southern pulled out where Monroe looked like they were going to lose. But there's been so many close games and it seems like most of those have gone against the Eagles. Yeah, the law of averages would state that uh, eventually something would break right for Georgia Southern and I think it was uh, just the fact that they had to keep their heads up they had to keep hustling because it's one thing to get bad breaks but if you let bad breaks get you down you're not going to be in a position to take advantage of good breaks when they come and for the most part nothing really lucky happened with Georgia Southern against Troy they just kept making the little plays and when the opportunities for the big ones were there where they've come up short so many times this season they came through on Saturday. All right well let's get out and take a look at some of the highlights from Georgia Southern and Troy. The Georgia Southern seniors taking the field for the last time as the Eagles host Troy in their season finale. Many questions swirling about the future of head coach Tyson Summers and his current staff prior to Saturday's game. Trouble early on as Eagles will fumble. It's recovered by Troy here in the first quarter. The defense able to hold Troy to a field goal though. The kick is up and good, and they take a three to nothing lead. Later, fourth and short, and the Eagle defense steps up once again, denying here. The offense able to take over, and what do you know? It's the much talked about, rarely seen option resulting in a 20 yard pickup in a first down. This takes us to the second, where once again it's the option. Matt Breida getting inside the five on this play. A few plays later, third down, senior Kevin Ellison lofts one up for fellow senior B.J. Johnson, who hauls it in, and the Eagles take a 7-3 lead. Troy finally getting their offense on track. Jordan Chun breaks free for a big pickup into Eagle territory, and then from the three, Chun in for the touchdown, and the Trojans take a 10-7 lead, which they'd carry into half. Second half, and this time it's the triple option, the fake and the Kevin Ellison turning up field 20 yards. Next, it's Matt Brito with a rare opportunity to run in the open field. He picks up 
15 of his 66 yards in the game. And then again, it's Ellison keeping it and going 24 yards. And after a review, this one ruled a touchdown. Ellison rushed for 115 yards in the game. The defense holding Troy in check for most of the third quarter. Akime Aligwe and Jay Ellison in on the hit. Back on offense, once again, Kevin Ellison freezes the defense, faking the pitch, and he's off down the sidelines for a 54-yard touchdown, some nice blocking along the way, and it's 21-10 Eagles. But Troy responding this time. The first down pickup on third and long, Brandon Silvers with the pass, and then it's Silvers to a wide open, Tavares McCormick, for the 16-yard touchdown. And the lead will be cut to 21 to 17 after three. In the fourth, Silvers swings it over to Jordan Chun, who tries to hurdle a defender, getting a first down here. And then it's Chun, another three-yard touchdown run as Troy takes a 24-21 lead. But the Eagles right back as Ellison rifles a pass to B.J. Johnson, who manages to haul it in, stay on his feet with the pirouette, and then outraces the defense for a 64-yard touchdown. The Eagles with a 28-24 lead, but it's never easy, and Troy fighting till the end. Here getting to the seven with seconds remaining in the game. Fourth down, and this pass will go incomplete as the Eagles win by a final of 28-24. After the game, Georgia Southern Athletics Director Tom Kleinlein issued a statement saying he wanted to end any speculation surrounding the future of head coach Tyson Summers telling student athletes, recruits, and fans that he will be the Georgia Southern head coach moving forward. Kleinlein went on to say he knows the results on the field this year or not up to Georgia Southern standards, but feels that many aspects are progressing well as Georgia Southern continues their third year in transition as an FBS member. We're Kyle and Jared Lott of Snack TV. Each week we go into millions of homes to show you great hunting. And we couldn't do what we do without TC Outdoors doing what they do. It doesn't matter if your adventure takes you fishing in the local pond or on a cross country hunt. TC Outdoors is going to be there for you with gear, know-how, and support, just like they are for us. They've been here for years. We know them. And we trust them. So come by TC Outdoors on Northside Drive. Tell them Jared and Kyle sent you. And after the game, we had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers and some of the players about the victory. Uh, I know before the game, there was a lot of emotions um, during the Eagle Walk. A lot of tears, a lot of things were said, like throughout my teammates, and a lot of good vibes said even before the game was even started. But when we got on the field, like, we just had to win. The only thing, that's the only thing we really cared about was winning, just going out good for the seniors and finishing y'all good. The win, the win pretty much, it ain't, it ain't really make our season the dream season, but it made us end our season well, and that's something that we all appreciate because everybody just had in mind that we're going to go out hard for the one more time, just one more time. That's not how we played. We always say, you know, it's not how you uh, start, but how you finish. That's what we've been saying all weekend. You know, I feel like, you know, us going out on top of the win, um, that's, you know, our last memory we're going to have is playing this game with uh, each other. So definitely getting a win. Um, I feel like, you know, race is a lot of the bad stuff that happened this year. I was in the locker room at one point crying, um, knowing that it's going to be last time. You know, we're dressing in blue and white, riding the yellow school buses, and uh, doing the Eagle Walk. And, you know, it's sad. You know, the fans have been great since ever since we've been here. Um, that's why we play the game for them. And it's just, a, you know, it was a sad day, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy that we won. And um, that's the last memory I'm going to have. Like you said, it's been an emotional day, but, um, you know, just coming out here and getting a win, you know, that, that words can't describe how I feel right now. You know, I feel like we won a national championship, you know, because, you know, that's our last time playing together. We went out on top of the winners. Eagle walk, walking out on the field. How was all that for you? It was very emotional. You know, it was hard, you know, to look around on the bus. You know, you know that's your last time riding the bus, singing uh, the Valley song, you know, seeing people's faces, you know, a lot of sad faces. But, you know, I could tell we was locked in from the get-go, and we went out here and showed it. I want to change it for the world, man. You know, I love these boys, and I love these coaches. You know, everything that we've been through, We one thing we did do, we did stick together. And as you can see, you know, defense had our back, we had their back. So I wouldn't change it for nothing. I just wanted to do whatever I could to help the team win. I knew my number was called, I was going to make the play. You know, I had no doubt in my mind, because, you know, this is the last time. So, you know, I went out there and I just left on the line for my brothers. 
No, you can't. It's hard. To, it's hard to put a put a um, finger on it. You know, just being able to come back and pause and sing your night. And you know, we knew what we had to do, and uh, we went out there with our minds right, and we did what we had to do. So it's just been a great time. You know, with all the with all the emotions and um. All the support that everybody showed towards us, us seniors, you know, just the whole team, you know, it's a great atmosphere. You know, we knew that Eagle Nation was going to come out and support us, win or lose, you know, even even with the way the season's been going, we know they're always going to have our backs, and they, and they did a great job today. You know, I broke down in tears when I, when I saw my mom and just all the other fans that have, that have been here the, the um, past five years that we've all been here. You know, it was just great to be able to get that acknowledgement from them. The season's been tough, you know, um, it's, been, it's been very tough, but... This last, this last go around right here, this last game, just been trying to soak it all in, you know, trying to soak it all in so I can add on to my memories. You know, last time doing something, you you want to make the most of it, and uh, you know that's what I try to do. You know, we just pretty much just telling each other, you know, we brothers. I love you, and anything, anything one of them need, we got them. And you know, don't be afraid to call. You know, football may be over now, but this we have a lifetime bond. Really excited for this senior class and, and obviously, uh, you know, being able to, to come back and, and play the way that we were and, uh, and be able to sit there and have the game plan that we had and, uh, and for our seniors. I mean, that, that, that's what this entire thing has been about in the last two weeks and, and uh, this collection of individuals that has done so much for our university and, uh, and particularly through our transition and we are uh, ecstatic for them. Again, Coach Brown and, and Troy have a good football team. They've certainly uh, earned that this year and, uh, again, just uh, can't explain enough how proud I am of these young men for their effort today, uh, continuing to believe uh, in us and what we're trying to do and continuing to, to make sure that they were playing for each other and playing as a team. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, we've done one minute, I think, every single day since day four camp. And, uh, and for it to come down to the last play where the defense is sitting there having to do it and those scenarios that you go over and over and over. And uh, it, uh, it, the win is big. The win's important, but it's certainly a little bit more satisfying for – uh, for these seniors and then obviously working on a phase that you've tried to work all season. So uh, with that, I'll take any questions that you got. Was there a concerted effort or, you know, like a game plan in the second half to come out and run the ball more? Yep, uh, certainly was. And, and I think you'd see that through the first couple of series through the third quarter and, and what we were trying to get. And uh, a lot of it, you know, was, was part of our option series and our option stuff that we were trying to get going. And, uh, and so it was, obvi you know, obviously a, a big phase of what we were trying to get done in the second half and we were able to capitalize of it. Uh, eventually, you know, uh, they eventually made an adjustment to it and took some of the things away. But I thought that uh, Coach Dean and, and the offensive line in particular were able to, to come back in the backs, obviously, and, and get some of the plays and with our inside zone play um, in the fourth quarter. How was the option so successful today and maybe not so much a lot of the other games this year? Uh, <sighs> You know, I've said I wasn't going to use this word anymore, but it, it just they, they gave us a look that gives us an opportunity. And uh, and then, you know, I think that that, uh, that that had a big piece of it. And it's certainly what we've tried to make sure when we look and we get into our game plan stuff, it was a big part of it uh, going into it. And, uh, and when we went into halftime, it was something that uh, we had all, myself and our offensive staff, had talked about. Uh, three or four of the plays that we have that are certainly part of the option series and trying to be able to get the ball a little bit more on the perimeter with some width and made a couple of adjustments. Um, you know, at halftime, we're able to come out in the second half and have a good bit of success with it. You talked about uh, wanting to finish right, win for the seniors. It seemed like the seniors kind of took it in their own hands there. A bunch of big days from Kevin and DJ and Matt. Oh, yeah. yeah there's no question. I thought, uh, I thought they all played really well. Um, you know, I think Kevin was over 100 yards. I know Matt was somewhere around 75 today. And then, obviously, uh, B.J. with the, the, the big-time catch, long run. And B.J. had a lot of big plays today, not just not just the, the touchdown and the long run, but he had a bunch of big third-down plays uh, that kept drives going for. So we were really excited about uh, that. And then, you know, again, I think uh, I thought our defense really played well. You know, uh, we've been challenged to some degree over the last three or four weeks, and I thought they stepped up and played extremely well, uh, particularly early in the game, you know, and I thought one of the biggest series of the game was uh, we had a turnover on offense and, and put ourselves kind of in a hole and defense stepped up, was able to hold them to a field goal. And I thought uh, I thought that that was really important. Coach, how emotional has today and this afternoon been for you? It's been pretty emotional. There's no question about that. There's, um, you know, just uh, it's, it's hard. You know, you try to – I had somebody say it to me the other day and, and – uh, you know, they said, well, you know, um, get your, you'll get, you know, your opportunities and, and, you know, get your guys in. I said, these are my guys. Every one of these guys is my guys. These, these players, these seniors, 
junior, sophomores, freshmen, every one of them, uh, you know, my heart swells up for. And, and every one of them I care so much about. And, uh, and, and so today was emotional because of that. We had, uh, you know, got back in here last night on, on, on Friday and, and did some of our meetings, our meal today, and uh, did a walkthrough, did, did the tunnel run going over Eagle Creek on Thursday. And those are, those are, those are hard things. It's the, it's the last, you know, um, last time of the 2016 season, last time for the 2016 seniors. And there's a, a lot of them. And, uh, and they mean a lot to me. They certainly mean a lot to this place. And uh, so it'll be hard with them leaving. And uh, but it's been uh, today is uh, is very satisfying for for them and to know that you've done the job that you needed to to finish them off the way that you needed to. In your opinion, do you see this game as a figurative band aid that can kind of heal what's been a down season in the grand scheme of what this program has been able to accomplish over thirty some years? I, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess that's up to each individual to make up their own mind. I, I know what we've tried to do this year, and I know what type of uh, tone that we've tried to set. And I certainly know that we have continued to work and continue to give effort. And I certainly know that we won a, a tough ball game against a good football team today. And I'm really excited about it. And I'm really excited about the seniors go, going, uh, going out there and, uh, and being able to finish this thing the way that we wanted to for them. Uh, it was. You know, most of them just a bunch of bunch of tight hugs. They they you know they're a lot bigger than I am. They hurt me when they when they when they come up and give me a big tight bear hug. I'm I'm beat up and bruised after the game, and I'll be I'll be sore tomorrow. My shoulders, my elbows, my ribs, my stomach, um, and and it's just you know um, sounds whatever uh, sounds sappy, but it's just it's it's just more of a bunch of them just. Hugging me tight and telling me they love me and tell me they appreciate me and and you know same with me going in the other direction with it. So um, and uh, we had we we had an awesome deal. Got a good chance to get back in the locker room. Got a chance to dance a little bit and uh, and, and and have some excitement, have some enthusiasm um, going through it. So it was a, it was a great way to finish all the way around. Coach, typically it's pretty busy for you after this last game, getting into recruiting and everything. Yes, sir. We don't know what your schedule's like, so. Uh, please forgive me for asking this question in the middle of you being in a good place. Sure. But I know there's going to have to probably be a time where you sit down, evaluate your coaching staff, and make some decisions. Sure. Is that coming up? Yeah. For well, you? we yes, sir. And that's a, that's a big part of what we've you know really tried to do all year from an evaluation standpoint. We've got official visit guys, um, you know, right now, and so we'll we'll certainly turn our attention to that from the immediate side of the things, and uh, and then. But yes, I mean. Uh, we'll go through and make sure that, that there is there's an evaluation process that's been taking place all year. So that's that's really nothing um, nothing different than what we had anticipated. And yes, we'll we'll, we'll start getting uh, a lot of our coaches back on the road at some point later tomorrow night, and then uh, and then back on the road on Monday. You've never had to make these kind of decisions before. If you did have to make a tough decision to let somebody go, how hard is that going to be for you? Uh, I would think it'd be really tough. Uh, I would you know uh, again I. Uh, I'm not someone that doesn't uh, that doesn't care about people. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not somebody that tries to um, be whatever. I, I just I, I've always wanted to be myself. I've always wanted to be somebody that uh, wanted to care about players and uh, wanted to care about people, and wanted to care about staff, and wanted to make sure that I've taken care of them and their families for everything they've got. So uh, the question, if that were if that were to be the case, yeah, it'd be really difficult on me. All right, Mike, we won't be doing our jobs if we don't bring up the fact that there's been a lot of rumors going on. Will Coach Summers be back? Uh, Tom Kleinlein, the athletic director, has been very quiet and has not come out and given him uh, his approval and said, yes, he will. But then again, he hasn't come out as of the time we're shooting this and said, no, he won't. Uh, I would imagine there'll probably be some changes if he does come back. Your thoughts on where things stand for the future at Georgia Southern? Well, I think that some changes need to be made uh, personnel-wise or just culture-wise. This is a team that brought back so many returning starters from last year's bowl winning team. A lot of high hopes. This is a team that got votes uh, uh, in anticipation of winning the Sun Belt. Even some quiet talk about could this team beat a couple of uh, P5 opponents. Western Michigan, a team who might be going to the Access Bowl. There were some fans out there who thought this Georgia Southern team was primed to be in that spot here on December 3rd. Instead, we're going to wake up on December 4th not looking forward to a bowl bid and instead talking about who might be or might not be on the sidelines next year. Uh, it, 
I honestly don't know. I've heard a lot of things one way, a lot of things the other way, but I, I think that uh, the next week or so is going to be time for uh, Tom Kleinlein, I'm sure he already has, but to continue to sit down, really think about things, how we got to where we are this year in the first week of December based on or versus last year when Georgia Southern was getting ready for its first ever uh, bowl game. All right, well, I guess that's what we have to either look forward to or not. We'll see. If we get a chance to talk with Athletic Director Tom Kleinlein, we'll be passing that on to the folks at home, either on Statesboro Herald or at statesboroherald.com. But for now, that'll wrap things up. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again soon.